Hello everyone and welcome to another season of Kobe's Travels. So this season I have a lot of fun stuff in store and I want to start off with Upper Michigan. Since starting this channel, lots of people have been requesting for videos on Upper Michigan. A while back I did a video on how to make pasties, but other than that I haven't had a chance to do much representation at all. So I spent this summer in Upper Michigan traveling around as well as going through a bunch of photos and videos from me growing up here in the Upper Michigan Wisconsin border. So without further ado, let's start with the top 10 places you should visit on an eastern road trip. Number one. For our first stop, we are going to be at Bridgeview Park. Open April through November from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. This spot offers beautiful views of the Mackinac Bridge, Lake, and sunsets. The Mackinac Bridge connects the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan, and as a result, you may hear some people call it the Mighty Mac, referring to its outstanding length of 5 miles and making it the longest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere. After the bridge opened in 1957, an annual walk across it would be held on Labor Day weekend to celebrate the achievement of the bridge. While often led by the governor of Michigan, an estimated and record-breaking group of nearly 85,000 people completed the walk in 1992 when it was led by none other than President George H. W. Bush. This park also contains a memorial statue to those who lost their lives while working on the bridge and sits near a Michigan Welcome Center, State Park, and National Memorial. Number 2 Approximately 26 miles northwest sits another remarkable bridge that you won't want to miss on this Upper Michigan road trip. Cut River Bridge is a part of the US-2 highway and offers some remarkable views, especially in the fall. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the iconic Cut River Bridge is one of Michigan's largest and most well-known bridges. Opened in 1947, the bridge was already built to become an attraction. Sitting 147 feet above Cut River and the valley, a deck offers remarkable views of Lake Michigan. Along with this, there is a series of trails and a stairway that brings you under the bridge. The trails follow the river and will lead you to the shoreline of Lake Michigan. Number 3 Continuing on our adventure along US-2, our next stop is only 10 miles away and is bound to be a smash hit amongst the kids. Garland Zoo is open 7 days a week with the hours of 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. from September 1st through October 16th. Final admission is at 4 p.m. with tickets costing $10 for anyone 13 and under and $15 for adults. There is also a family rate of $50 for up to 6 people. A popular road trip destination in Upper Michigan, this small zoo offers a large range of animals from all over the world and allows you to feed deer, goats, rabbits, and even bears. If timed correctly, you can also watch the lions and tigers be fed around 4 o'clock. Number 4 Our fourth stop brings us to a spot many don't know about, despite how remarkable and unique it is. Kitch Itty Kippy, otherwise known as the Big Spring, is Michigan's largest natural spring. It has a maximum depth of 45 feet, and the spring flows at a rate of more than 10,000 gallons a minute. That's more than some of the springs I visited in Yellowstone National Park. Here you can be taken out on a wooden dock to the middle of the spring. The water is a rich bluish green in color due to its high sulfate content, which you can easily smell. On the flip side of this, 
The water is crystal clear and about 45 degrees year round, meaning you can view many trouts and perch that call the spring home as this is a protected spot. This spring is within a state park, so while there make sure to buy a pass as this will come in handy for some of our later destinations. Number 5 our next stop is a bit of a drive at approximately 80 miles, but it does kick off a bunch of fun near the shore of Lake Superior. The K.I. Sawyer Air Museum gives an in-depth look at the history of this fascinating airport while also making us question the future. When opened, this airport was used for all the mining in the Upper Peninsula. But on May 8, 1959, it became an official Air Force base for nearly 40 years. Now being used as an international airport, talks of a space launch pad has been discussed on the northern side of Marquette. Combine this and the airport would drastically change the area. Some saying for better with the economy, and some saying for worse with the environment. Number 6 Marking the halfway point of our trip is another overlook location about 20 miles north. Mount Marquette Overlook is a perfect spot to get out and stretch your legs as it not only provides beautiful views of Lake Superior, but also provides a beautiful view of the town of Marquette itself. And I just want to take a moment for those who are not subscribed, if you are liking this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as a majority of the views are not subscribed yet and it means a lot to me and it absolutely goes a long way. Number 7 Staying in the city of Marquette, we now find ourselves in the northern part of it. On this 323-acre forested peninsula sits Presque Isle Park. During the summer of 1891, Frederick Olmsted, the famous landscape architect who helped design New York's one and only Central Park, visited here to work on a design project for the peninsula. His conclusion can be summed up in three simple words. Don't touch it. The park offers countless breathtaking views while offering hiking trails, biking, and even cliff jumping. The best part is that this peninsula is absolutely free. Number 8 While on the way east of Marquette, make sure to stop in the town of Christmas and take a photo with the giant Santa before driving the additional six miles to the Wagner Falls scenic site. While you can do an upper Michigan road trip strictly for waterfalls, this is one of the best in the pictured rocks area and you won't want to miss it. This wheelchair and walker friendly boardwalk is quickly accessible and is a very short distance from the parking lot. Number 9 Now arriving in one of Upper Michigan's most popular destinations, the Pictured Rocks offers countless possibilities from cruising along 40 miles of lakeshore to 100 miles of trails in the hardwood forest. To make the most of our stop here, I have two destinations in mind. The first stop is Miner's Falls, which is considered the park's most powerful waterfall. Not wheelchair accessible, there is 64 steps leading to a viewing platform. People can also climb off the platform and into the valley below, but beware that this is a very steep area. The second stop is the Chapel Falls Trailhead. If you'd like to do the entire loop, it's about 10 miles long and considered moderately challenging, taking just under 4 hours on average to complete. You will need to bring your own food and water and this hike offers several waterfalls 
as well as special lakeshore views you will not see elsewhere. This hike always leaves people speechless and wanting to do it again. Important note though, bear spray is highly recommended. Number 10. Our next stop is nearly two hours away as our trip begins to come to an end. Tecumanon Falls is within another state park and is considered one of the best waterfalls throughout all of Upper Michigan. The nice part of this location is that both the upper and lower falls can be accessed by a short hike, but there is also a five mile trail that connects the two falls while also giving you access to an island. While here, you can also go hiking with your dog. Cell phone service doesn't really exist here though, but there is also a restaurant and gift shop near the parking lots in case of an emergency. To end our trip, we make one final stop at this bonus location located 75 miles east. To begin our trip, we marveled over the man-made achievement of the Mackinac Bridge. So I think it's only fitting that we end our road trip by now marveling over the man-made achievement of the Sioux Locks. Here you get a beautiful view of the locks as well as Canada. And a fun fact about this location is that actually ranging all the way back to the 1850s, people stopped to watch the boats passing through the locks. Today, nearly 7,000 ships pass through annually, hauling nearly 86 million tons of cargo, and 90% of the United States iron ore actually passes through these locks. Another one of the coolest aspects of the Sioux locks is that there is no pumps used within them, Instead, it is 100% gravity fed to make up for a height of 21 feet in difference. That's nearly 22 million gallons of water. If also interested, there is a museum here as well as boat tours. You can do either or for a cheap price. The overall drive time for this road trip is only 9 hours, making it the perfect weekend road trip with plenty of time to explore. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my Michigan adventures, and as always, take care, travel safe, and I'll see you all on the next adventure.